Hi fans and welcome to this week six edition of the Woodland Hills Football Network pregame show. Last Friday night, the Wolverines traveled to Upper St. Clair and shut out the Panthers 48 to zero. This week, the Wolverines host Cannon Mack and it'll be homecoming at the Wolverina. We'll sit down with Woodland Hills head coach George Novak to review last week's victory over Upper St. Clair, preview this week's game against the Big Macs, and we'll also let you see highlights of Friday night's game. All of that and more on the pregame show right here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. Woodland Hills entered week 5, 4 and 0 oh, after running past Baldwin 25 to 0 at the Wolverina. Upper St. Clair was 1 and 3 entering week 5 after coming off of a week 4 non-conference loss at North Allegheny. Regardless of the records, a Southeastern Conference matchup between the Wolverines and the Panthers is sure to garner a lot of attention. The rivalry between these perennial WPIAL powers was rekindled at Upper St. Clair High School. And off will go to the tailback, and he is met in the backfield, maybe driving his way back to the line of scrimmage, but no further. No handoff to Miles Sanders, who bounces it right and has a lot of room. Sanders inside of the 45, the 40, the 35, the 30, 25, inside of the 20. He slips through a tackle and into the end zone he goes. Miles Sanders, 50 yards unscathed for the touchdown. Again, I go back, the lesser of two evils. Which one do you want? Do you want him to run it back, or do you want him to take it on offense and run it right down the field? Lund looks left the whole way, throws the pass is high, but it is complete on the reception. Mike Crenn and Crenn is brought down after picking up an upper St. Clair first down. And the punt is blocked by the Wolverines. The ball is sky high. A bunch of white jerseys go after it. It's still loose. The Wolverines trying to scoop it up and finally it will be picked up by a Wolverine inside of the 15 at the 12 yard line. Hand off Sanders, he'll run to his right. Big hole into the end zone following Steve Puel for a Woodland Hills touchdown. 10 guys in the box on that last play, Adam. Just the one, one defender split out with the wide receiver and Woodland Hills did a great job of just going right at Upper St. Clair with some power football. Retreating is Art Tompkins and he'll start from his own 12. Picking up some blockers, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Here comes Art Tompkins dancing to the near boundary and finally brought down inside of the Upper St. Clair 40 at the 38 yard line. A great return and great blocks for the white and turquoise. Hand off, no, it's gonna be Jeremiah Jones leaping into the end zone off of a broken play and Woodland Hills expands their lead to 20 to zero. He will run to his left, but there's not much room to run to his left and Bowden on a run blitz makes the tackle five yards deep in the backfield. Off of play action, Jones, he'll now take off running to his right hand side inside of the 30, inside of the 25, spinning his way, still on his feet somehow as he runs to the near sideline and he'll finally be spun down right around the first down marker. Draw handoff to Joel Shaw as he will bounce to the near side, through tacklers inside of the 10, inside of the five, across the goal line for a Woodland Hills touchdown. How did Joel Shaw do it? I, I don't know, that was a great effort by Joel Shaw once he got into that second level, I mean, he was almost looking for people to hit. Shotgun formation, handoff goes to Miles Sanders, big hole over right tackle. Sanders into Upper St. Clair territory, spinning his way forward, inside of the 40, showing good balance, inside of the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10 to the far boundary, end zone touchdown, Woodland Hills, 65 yarder for Miles Sanders. Trips to the left, one receiver to the far boundary right. Lund on a screen, Wolverines got sucked in on this one, Bisman carrying that football. Still on his feet inside of Woodland Hills territory. The ball came loose and the Wolverines have it. Damon Johnson jumps on the football at the Woodland Hills 47 yard line. Handoff will go to Joel Shaw. Shaw into open field inside of the 50, inside of the 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, five, end zone. Touchdown, the big fella again rumbles for a long TD. Handoff. In the backfield is Kevin Solomon bringing down the ball carrier. Moran Miles gonna throw a quick slip screen to Havon Price. Price inside of the 50, inside of the 45 to the 40, 35, 30, and he will be brought down at the 27 yard line and a flag comes in late. And I think this is gonna go against the Panthers as well. Nice snap by Rickard. Nice boot by Leon and that field goal is good. It would have been good from 40 plus. Trips to the right of the formation. That's the short side as Gunnar Lund throws to his left and he will complete that pass. 
One straight drop back, pressured late, throws it across the middle. The pass is complete to Bartusiak, and he is brought down in the open field by Adam McVay. Lund will work off the play action, rolling to his right. Throws, the pass is complete, bobbling the football, but hanging onto it on his hip is Doug Wagner. End around on the jet sweep comes to Art Tompkins. Tompkins breaks free across the 40, inside of the 50, and he'll be forced out of bounds along the near boundary at the 48-yard line. Handoff goes to Hassan Ghanem. Big hole for Ghanem. He's brought down inside of the 30 at the 28-yard line. That's a Woody High first down. Good snap, good hold. The kick up, end over end. Inside of the right upright and good. Three touchdowns from Miles Sanders, two scores by Joel Shaw, and a flawless evening from kicker John Leone powered the Wolverines to 48 points. But the defense was the real story, shutting out the Panthers while getting solid play from the line, linebackers, and secondary. Woodland Hills returns to the Wolverina for homecoming as they'll host Ken and Mack in a Southeastern Conference matchup in Week 6. We are the Woodland Hills Wolverines. Since 1987, we've been a part of some of the most electrifying football games in Western Pennsylvania, and we've established a national reputation of excellence. Whether you're a former player, a Woody High alum, a parent, or a fan, you're part of our Wolverine family. And now you can join us by becoming a part of our new booster club, the Wolverine Nation. Visit whfba.org and see how your donation can help our student athletes while earning you unique benefits. We're more than just a booster club. We are the Wolverine Nation. Hi fans and welcome to this week six edition of the Woodland Hills Football Network pregame show. Adam Guskey here sitting down with Woodland Hills head coach George Novak and coach Novak. Before we talk about this week's homecoming game against Cannon Mack, let's take a look back to last Friday night's victory over Upper St. Clair, by far the most complete game of the season. I agree with you, Adam. I, you know, I've been coaching a long time. That was one of the most rewarding games we've played in 28 years here at Woodland Hills. To beat a, a decent uh, Upper St. Clair team and beat them in every aspect of the game, offense, defense, and special teams. You mentioned the special teams. Let's start there. John Leone, perfect 7-of-7 seven seven for the extra points. Also had two big 30-yard field goals. Yeah, he had a great night. You know, he was, this is his first year kicking for us. And he was hooking the ball a lot in the first couple games, and he worked on it last week, and he did a great job, got his first two field goals. So, it, you know, John's coming along real well, and uh, hopefully he's going to help us down the stretch. Coverage units seem to look good as well. Coach Whitehurst does a great job with the special teams, and he uh, moved some people around, got some more speed on it, and uh, a couple sophomores were in there doing a great job. And, uh, you know, you have to point out uh, Jason Visco did a nice job. And, Saeed Holt and uh, Rasad uh, McKnight, they all made some big plays along with some other guys, but you know, they get out and they hit some people. Let's talk about the defense. That secondary really came to play after struggling a bit against both Shaler and Baldwin. Yeah, that was our best game defensively against the run and against the pass. And part of it was, I think they put a good pass rush on. We had a number of sacks. Uh, you know, it was the lowest offensive output any team had on us this year was Upper St. Clair. And like I say, they're a well-coached team. I have a lot of respect for Coach Render and his staff. And, you know, they're always ready to play, and that's a big game for us. And uh, that was a great, great defensive effort. Let's talk about the offense. Miles Sanders leading the way, four carries for 130 yards and three touchdowns. It's a pretty good average. He's unbelievable. You know, can't say enough about Miles. You know, first time he carried the ball, he took it for a touchdown. And, uh, he has great speed, great mobility. He showed that he could run inside and outside. You know, he ran, broke some tackles, made some moves. Uh, he just did a phenomenal job. And, you know, by that time, you know, the score was 42 nothing, And, you know, we took him out for a rest and didn't want to put him in the game where he could get hurt. We need him down the stretch, not now. You know, there's some surprising speed coming from Joel Shaw this season. Yeah, for a big guy, when he gets out in the open, he can turn it on. He had a great game. I think uh, that might have been his best game of the year, too. Uh, he played well against Baldwin, but I think uh, the Upper St. Clair game, he had a complete game. You touched on blocking and some downfield blocking that's starting to catch our eye, especially on the television crew, is Jeremiah Jones. Not only does he run the ball well, throw the ball well, but it seems like when there's a long run, Jeremiah's downfield trying to block as well. Yeah, after his fake, he always tries to get downfield and help out wherever he can. Uh, 
you know, he always carries out his fakes, which takes him downfield. And when he can get there and do some, you know, help some as far as blocking, he does, he does a good job at it. Coach, let's talk about the receiving core. We haven't talked about them a lot this season, but uh, even though they only had one 26-yard pass this whole week, uh, it seemed like they were getting downfield and blocking also. We got some good athletes out there, and we were running the ball so well. And, uh, we did call several more pass plays, but uh, there seemed to be coverage, and Jeremiah would take the ball and get some positive yards for us. Uh, we do have to get better at the passing attack, and we got some good kids out there with some good speed and good hands, so we're going to work on it the rest of the year. Coach, before we talk about the game specifically, let's talk about homecoming. I'm sure it's glad to get you're glad to get back to the Wolverine for a home game before a tough two-game road stretch. We're the road warriors this year. You know, we had to get down to Peters, went to Bethel, Upper St. Clair, two tough teams to play away. We still got to go to West Allegheny, and then we got to go to my Lebanon, all good football teams. So, yeah, we got a couple of tough ones left, but it's nice to come home for homecoming and uh, play before a hometown crowd. Let's talk about the Big Max uh, coaching shakeup. I had a lot of respect for Coach Coder. I think he did a great job. I'm not sure of all the details. That was an unfortunate thing, but, you know, he had to resign. Uh, I talked to him afterwards, and he'd rather not talk about it. He told me a couple things, but I don't want to say it on the air, but uh, it seems like they're doing the same types of things last week that they did the previous weeks as far as offense and defense. So we were able to, you know, scout them pretty thorough. Let's talk specifics about the Big Macs, first of all, with their offense. They're kind of a multiple set of offense. Uh, they have a quarterback, a uh, big kid he played against us last year. Uh, Left-hander, throws the ball well, can get it downfield. He got some athletes at receiver. Uh, then they'll go to a uh, wildcat formation where they put a pretty quick kid back there where they try to run the ball. Uh, I think the key is on the offensive and defensive lines. They have size to match ours. You know, Upper St. Clair was a pretty big team. This team's bigger than them. They had a couple of 300 pounders, a couple guys in the 270, 290 range. So they have a big team and they're tough kids. They're wrestlers down there. It's a big wrestling school. Uh, both sides of the line on offense, especially they're a very big team. Let's talk about the defense. What can, we, what can we expect from their D? They're multiple D. They're base 4-3, cover 2 defense like the Tampa 2. But, uh, you know, they have a size up front. The linebackers are big. The up front four guys are big. And uh, it'll be a challenge for us again. Always like to talk about the Woodland Hills alums. And last Monday night when we recorded the pregame show, we talked about the matchup between the Jets and the Bears. And right off the bat, Ryan Mundy with a pick six. Yeah, you know, I was so proud watching the game and see him right off the bat, second play of the game, they tried to screen and he picked it off and ran for a touchdown. And, you know, to get to see Miles or uh, Darren Walls play cornerback, did a nice job. He started and Rontez Miles got in on the special team. So, you know, we got to see three Wolverines playing in an NFL game. That's wonderful. It's an unbelievable experience. Coach Novak, thanks a lot for your time. Good luck this week against the Big Macs, and we'll talk to you again next week before you hit the road against West Day. Thanks, Adam. We'll be right back with more of the pregame show right after this here on the Woodland Hills Football Network. What's for dinner on Wednesday night? Chicken wings. Come on down to Turtle Creek for Wednesday night wings at the Wolverina. Fresh, whole wings, hand-breaded and hand-tossed with four different flavors. And the best part is that all proceeds benefit the Woodland Hills football program. Wednesday Night Wings at the Wolverina, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. every Wednesday during the season. All right, fans, let's see where the Wolverines stand in the Southeastern Conference. And now let's take a look at the MSA Sports WPIAL Quad A Top 10 Rankings.
Again, fans, we thank you for joining us for this week's six edition of the Woodland Hills Football Network pregame show. If you can't make it to the Wolverine this Friday night, you can tune in on our flagship radio station, AM 1550 WZUM. The game is also available on the web at woodlandhillsfootballnetwork.com. Our radio broadcast can be heard live and archived on msasports.net. We'll have our live coverage on Monroeville Comcast Cable Channel 13, Penn Hills Comcast Cable Channel 98, and Verizon Fios Channel 37. And don't forget, you can tune into replays of Friday night's game on all of our television affiliates and our YouTube channel. For everybody at the Woodland Hills Football Network, I'm Adam Gusky, and we'll talk to you again next week as the Wolverines travel to West Allegheny. This has been a presentation of the Woodland Hills Football Network. Watch us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and as always, visit us at woodlandhillsfootballnetwork.com.